Now, in the Harvey Norman Lounge on Pet Corner today, we look at all the all too common problems of chubby pets. Pets that perhaps we've given a bit too much love to in the form of food, or those pets that are not as active as they should be. <laughs> Kanye is licking my hand. This is really quite, it's quite weird. I hear the help is vet nurse and dog trainer Kelly McFarland. Kelly, good morning. We should first say morning. this is Kanye, a little Sydney Silky. This is um, Dom Harvey's dog. Yeah, I picked him up in the green room. He's not, he's <laughs> or not, he picked me up. And he's not fat at all. He is well looked after and he's got just that seems like the perfect way I mean it can seem it can be look a little bit funny seeing chubby pets but um, there are some dangers of your pet being overweight definitely I think a, a lot of the issue at the moment is there's so many pets I can't do it without laughing now because of the leg my, <laughs> my hand tastes really your good it's so wet what's on it yeah. <laughs> um, but I think the reality is there's a, um, a lot of chubby pets out there and actually people are thinking that's normal mm. and so when they see a dog that that is normal. They kind of think the dog's really underway, or the cat. Oh, look at that cat! And uh, that certainly isn't normal. Um, but yeah, so they start to think that these kind of animals are, um, yeah, you know, uh, how they should be looking. Yeah, that fat's okay. What yeah. is overweight for your pets? Uh, we, we do body condition scoring. So for little Kanye, he's definitely around about the grade three. So he's he's looking pretty good and healthy. Mm -hmm. um, if they're a grade five or plus you know they look like the cat that was just shown on screen then and if they're a zero then um, they're very very underweight so there should be about that three mark right there's another example right there so these yeah, animals are a little bit too chubby <laughs> um yes you can see their little see. belly are they so what grade would they be around about um i would say well the cat's definitely a good uh, a good five there looking at that kind of uh, tummy area yeah. and even around the the chest area as well um and your labrador probably again a four to five so yeah so you've got an animal that you've been, that, and Labradors, they do like to eat, don't they? So yep. can you actually put your pooch or your cat onto a diet? Yeah, there's special um, dietary food out there, uh, certainly um, in the veterinary profession. Mm -hmm. So for us, if we have animals who are coming in that are just too um, chubby, especially some of these cats who owners feel that, you know, cats meowing, so they must want food. Mm -hmm. But actually the cats learn meowing works and they get more food. And also they probably go around the neighbourhood as well. So yeah, there's certainly... Um, prescription food out there and to, to put them on specific diets. Do they eat because they're hungry or they're bored? And they, they eat because they're, you know, because they are hungry. Um, but what tends to happen, as I say, is they learn what works. Mm. So if they learn that you opening the cupboard delivers food, then they're going to make sure that you're going to get to that cupboard and deliver the food. <laughs> so what's the best thing that you should be feeding your cats and dogs? There's lots of different foods on the market, so it really depends on the animal itself. Um, personally, I prefer the drier foods because they've got everything in that they need. There is also uh, the wet foods as well, which have a higher water content, but again, very, very good for um, cats or dogs that don't really take enough water mm. in. Yeah. Now this is a before and after shot of a dog that has been on a bit of a diet. Yes. So before, <laughs> oh, he's obviously a grade, what, say what, grade five? Oh, five. That up, but yeah, maybe pretty, a ten. Pretty beefy. <laughs> and then look at his diet. He's smiling when he's had his diet. It's probably because he can move around now and exercise and enjoy life. Get up the stairs. Yeah. Uh, what if you're like Holly's cat who um, eats at her house and then goes over and eats at the neighbour's house as well? Restrict the food. The risk as well for all animals who are overeating, just like people, okay, there's... Um, He's off. Yeah, he's gone. He's <laughs> had enough. Um, is there are health conditions as well. So you've got to be very careful that, you know, obesity, just like people, it creates um, okay. diabetes and all other kinds of yeah, health right. conditions. So you can make, you, you can obviously walk your dog for the exercise. Yeah. How do you walk your cat? I mean, how do you get your cat <laughs> exercise? You can, well, firstly, if you need to reduce their food, if you think they are off out around the neighbours' yeah. houses, that's the first thing. And secondly, yeah, you know, actually play with them. There are a lot of cats that like to jump around and move about and have a good time. So interact with your cat. Yeah. Actually take a little bit of playtime. What about yeah. some other animals like rabbits and birds and things? They get obese. Oh, some do. I have seen a couple of fat rabbits. Yeah, again, it's just purely overeating, so it's something to watch for, and especially if they are um, free-range rabbits. So again, um, they do tend to wander around to the neighbours' houses, and that's becoming more and more common now, I'm, I'm starting to see. Right, yeah. so the, the moral of the story is just don't feed your pet so <laughs> much food. Would yeah. that be right? That's about right, yeah. Okay, give them a bit of exercise, and yeah. you don't have to show them love through giving them treats. No, there's they other ways. They don't necessarily yeah. need them. Hey, thank you so much, Kelly. Thank you. And you can pick up a Sticky King washable hair, pet fur and lint remover and get the cafe special deal by calling the number on screen.